Hey there, if you've been missing some class lately, let's do some virtual science. What I have here is some brine shrimp, and I, I've done a hatch, and you could probably see them swimming around in there. This is the control. This is an experiment where, whoops, I have um, one drop of yellow food coloring. thought that might be a fun thing to experiment with. This is two drops of yellow food coloring and four drops of yellow food coloring. So what I did was I doubled it each time. So you can see that gradation from no food coloring on through four drops. You always need a control. The control is the unchanged part, the original recipe. And then here I have an increasing amount of my experimental contaminant. And I want to see what's the effects of this on brine shrimp hatch rate. So the first thing I've got to do is, is actually get the sample ready. And so I'm going to plate these. I don't want to screw up which is which, so I'll just leave them exactly where they're at. And to plate these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right in the middle and I'm going to suck up an entire pipette and then as fast as I can I'm going to do three drops per drop. Whoops, that was four. So you can see there's a little mistake there, but we'll just plate these out. In biology, you always want to have 30 samples in professional biology. When it comes to statistics, though, I can work with just 10. And hey, that, that's pretty good. Let's go with 16. Let's empty out the pipette and get all my shrimp. Oops, that was supposed to be three. And do I have some room over here? There we go. It looks like I'm going to get one more. So there's how I've played it out. All right, so I have everything plated out here, and I have a good sample of each. I'm now going to try to get an average number of shrimp per drop. So I'm going to use my hand lens here, and we're actually going to go in and explore, see what we can find here. Look at that. See, you can see them very well. There's one. Nobody's home there. One. There's, oh, look at that. One, two, so remember that the only difference between screwing around in science, according to Mythbusters, is writing it down. Let's make it science. Let's write it down. All right, so I've got the data now for the control. And for one drop of food coloring, I have the data. Three drops of food coloring was pretty exciting to see. And I thought that it would just be, that it was just kind of an anomaly. But look at the averages here. Compare that to uh, the control. I think we have something here. It looks like the food coloring is actually increasing their hatch rate as we increase concentration. The data seem to support that. Let's keep trying. And so now here's four drops. And if the trend is following, I'm expecting I'll have even more shrimp per drop here. Here's our control, one drop of food coloring, two drops of food coloring, and four drops of food coloring. And so what we can do is we can take the total number of shrimp divided by the total number of drops and get an average for each one. And let's build a bar chart using that data. So a nice thing about an average is you don't need the same number of drops per experimental realm. Uh, you can see I did have 17 drops for these two. I had 18 drops and 18 drops for these two. And if you look at the control, I ended up with 38 divided by 17 drops. So 38 shrimp divided by 17 drops equals 2.24 shrimp per drop. And then I had 19 shrimp divided by 17 drops, 1.12 shrimp per drop. And then I had 
71 divided by 18, with two drops of food coloring, I increased to 3.94 shrimp per drop. And I was starting to think this might actually be a trend. And look what I got for four drops, 249 shrimp hatched divided by 18 drops for 13.83 shrimp per drop. So it does seem as though the food coloring and its increased solute concentration or something really seems to actually help the shrimp hatch. And it's very evident when you look in here that we've got a galaxy of shrimp. Here's my control. Here's my one drop of food coloring two drops of food coloring, and four drops of food coloring. And so qualitative analysis also shows that you get more shrimp for each drop of food coloring. This piece of data right here seems to be a little suspect, and I might want to reanalyze that. I probably just got a bad pipette, but we'll save that for another time. Uh, it looks like my results are pretty conclusive that the control at 2.24 shrimp per drop versus the higher concentration at 13.83 shrimp per drop also confirms the qualitative evidence of this versus this. So all we have left to do now is build a chart and write our lab report and you can find the instructions for writing that lab report on Canvas. Go ahead and use this data and it looks like I'm out of time.